you live? We are CTE live. Episode 304. We're back from Montana and it's been a great fucking time and shit. How's everyone been doing, man? Schmitty's famous. We did it. We, Schmitty made it. We did it. Schmitty did it. Let's get into this little Montana trip. We'll get into the Schmidt trip real quick, real quick. Yeah, went to our, the hometown, the old stomping grounds where we've had a handful of our fights. Four <laughs> Seasons Arena, and uh, we brought two of our boys up there. JoJo, 3-0. Mm -hmm. He was looking to go 4-0, fighting a grappler. Amateur. He's fighting a kid, yep, look, fighting a kid who uh, had 10, 10 fights. The Nine. kid had a lot of experience, and... Uh, Cut the weight, 145, traveling, cutting Oof. weight is brutal. And JoJo was battling some mental demons all weekend, which, I mean, that's part, part of it. Fight, you ever yeah. get in a fight? If Schmitty, if you actually get the oh, fight with MMA God. Guru, the mental demons you're going to battle, you're going to have a whole new respect for it. And uh, he battled through them. Plus, I mean, the boys are lucky. They got the the champ, champ, uh, giving them advice. And it's like, you get advice from Sean. And just like the commentators were saying, if someone like Sean believes in you i mean that gives you a certain sense of confidence so once we got to the arena got jojo's hands wrapped he was good to go yep. um that's the thing too you you have play all these fucking games in your mind the fight could go thousands of different ways and you start thinking about all the different ways the fight could go you start driving yourself fucking crazy yep, yep. and uh but the thing is once like once the cage locks and your feet are on there it's like okay this is what we do every day and it yep. usually, usually comes to you and jojo went out there Got in the kid's face right away and started just making it a brawl and started just getting in his face. He hurt him right away and he just didn't let off the gas one bit. Ended up trying to throw a high kick and the kid shot in at the same time, ran into JoJo's knee and JoJo knocked him out cold. As an amateur, you're not allowed to knee in the head, so it was a little controversial. But I was like, dude, even if they called it no contest or a loss, like you still knocked him out cold. But uh, he's the amateur champ now, 145. Let's go. Be fun to watch his career play out. Then we got Ezra, just two and zero oh now. Fuck, that's it's just so sweet to watch Ezra's career. Well, both Ezra and JoJo both listen. Well, Ezra listened to the pod when he was in high school. Then moved, saved up money. Him and his girlfriend moved down, came, started training, got amateur fights, turned pro. Now he's two and zero oh pro. Just, well, it's fucking so cool. That is such a sick story, bro. So Ezra's cool. a legend. JoJo's a legend. Yep. I'm just so that's sick. Literally yeah. part of the Patreon like five years ago. Crazy. Like a long time ago, that's Patreon cool. people. Um, and JoJo said I reviewed his fight on Patreon a long <laughs> time ago, and he's like, "Fuck!" And then he just ended up moving down and stuff. Uh, but Ezra, dude, the kid is fucking. He's like Hamzat at 135 with more skills. Yeah, Ezra is going to be a problem. <laughs> Literally, a he's gonna be in the problem. UFC next year and be a be a serious issue. And there and there's a possibility. I don't even want to talk about the fight yet. We'll let him talk about it. But a big fight with the UFC vet possibly next Damn. for Ezra. Wow, yeah. Al already. Um, but dude, I mean, he goes out there so confident, so confident. Grabs a hold of the kid, locks his hands. As soon as he locks his hands anywhere, he's gonna end up scoring on you, and he can keep that pace the whole time. And uh, that was the co-main event. He had some good callouts yep. for after the fight. Um, both the boys' weight cuts went good. We stayed in a nice little Airbnb the first night. Stayed in a little hotel the next night. And uh, got to see my dad. Got to see your dad. Yeah, that was fun. And it was a successful trip, 100% success. Dude, I fucking love those trips. It's so funny. We were talking about, because Tim and I were doing these exact same trips when I was an amateur. Like, because I, I was an amateur for five fights before I turned pro. So we were doing these exact same trips. But we were, like, so strapped for money. That it's cool that like Tim and I are in a position to where we can take these guys. Like we're getting these guys fights. We're paying for the flights. We're paying for the travel. We're paying for the food. Airbnb. We're paying for the Airbnb. Rental car. It's like, it's fucking sweet to be able to give back in that way to to our soldiers. It's just a. Uh, but when we were doing it, we were fucking strapped. Like we spent five bucks on food, and we were just like. God, it. yeah, it's just fucking. I would, I would whittle my way all the way down to zero until I fight again, and uh, then I have a little bit more money. Uh, but it does feel good being able to spoil those guys because when you're coming up, those little amounts of money cause you stress. So yeah. to be able to take that off those guys feels good. And we kept it humble this time. Last time we, these guys fought, we took a jet. This time we took good old Delta. Yeah, we did, and it so wasn't that bad. I mean, and you did a good job. You weren't getting so, uh, you weren't getting too frustrated with all the fans, and no, yeah, it's, it's cool seeing all the love, and support. So, I've, well, it's so funny. People come up to me and talk to me like I just got fucking my family got murdered or something. They're like, "Hey, man, it's okay." I'm like, "What are you talking about? 
<laughs> I want. Uh, no, it's funny though. They come up and they mean well. It's like they they just don't want to see me sad or like whatever. They're like, hey man, keep your head up. I'm like, dude, my head's high as a motherfucker. I just defended the belt for the fucking second time. Like life's good, brother. I am good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a little CTE, but that's fine. It's what happens when you don't get punched in the head for five rounds. You know what I mean? If you got CTE, you got to be going off on X like Antonio Brown does. I went CTE off on X for a little bit there after <laughs> after I watched the fight. I finally watched the They're fight. Like, Sean made, going wild on this X. We did go a little tra- crazy. We made a little video watching the fight. It's funny. People are saying, you just have a bunch of yes men around you. I'm like, if you watch round one, three, and five closely, no commentating. I mean, I'm not going to talk dude, about it too much. But I you mean, watch, just go watch one, three, and five. Two and four, I lost. No debate. I'm 100% I lost those two rounds. One, three, and five. Guru isn't the type to be super biased one way or the other. But the thing that about round one, it depends what those judges scored that front headlock. Yeah. Marab had a front headlock, not really a good bite on the neck at all. It wasn't a submission attempt. It could, from someone's view, it could look tight, yeah. but it wasn't tight. You had two hands on it. Didn't really do any damage, so he technically, I mean, had two submission attempts, and it depends how the judges scored that. Are the judges scoring the twos to the body? Are the judges scoring yeah. more for those? So it's kind of... People loved, love to hate, though. That is one thing. Schmidt, you're going through that. People love to hate, eh? Yeah, but hey. You live and learn. In so, my how's position. your newfound fame? Yes. Um, handling it well. Sleeping great at night. Are We're you? We're good. Are you yep. actually? Are you fucking going through it? Because I feel like you're lying. And you're going through it. I mean, yeah. It, well, it sucks. But I did. What that sucks to about it? Well, just you know, like that people just, think you're. But guess what? It's true that the only thing that matters is the people around you and your family and the people that know me. And that's it. Yeah. So we move on. Bad day at the office. We move on. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, and it'll fizzle yeah. away. I'm getting And you're up. welcome. I saved that last podcast just like I saved that press conference. So. Hey. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> you gotta get. Bro, I saw Sean getting hate Joe, but I said, I'll take that from you. Why do you keep saying I, why do you keep saying Sean was down bad? I haven't been down bad once. Hey, we laughed a lot, and I'll take that. We I know. Like, I saved it. Sean was down bad. I'm like, buddy, I haven't been down bad. Life's good. Yep. I the instantly go right straight to is like, Elena's healthy. My family's healthy. Mm-hmm. Like life could be so much worse. Like it still eats you up too. Like three judges supposedly lost a uh, thought I lost a fight, but when I watched it back, I thought I won the fight. So it's like I'm gonna let these three judges and a bunch of fucking idiots on Twitter say that I lost. When I watched the fight back, I was like, hey, there's an argument for round one that I won the fight. So I, it's not really bothering me at all and then i look at elena i'm like oh my god people are dealing with their kids sick people are dealing with cancer people are dealing with way worse shit than oh i someone thought i lost a fight like fuck it could be way worse yeah if something like that was going on you'd be like i would lose the next 10 fights right now for that to go away oh my god dude and then this weather on top of it oh my god dude, it makes me want to go to a park and then wish i was at home playing call of duty at nighttime it's so nice here too Dude, the weather! Oh my God, it doesn't make you happy and it smile. Does, I just it go does. outside and just fucking take a whiff of my pits and I just smile. Yeah, my girl's telling me it's the autumnal equinox today, so it's like the start of fall. Oh, it's, it makes me happy. Hell yeah, it's a good time. I mean, I've been getting a good amount of hate too, but I think I think those people were just waiting. Yeah, waiting for course. the fail. Waiting for the fail so they could just dive on it. Well, I because I didn't I didn't just get on social media for a little bit, but then I heard all the hate you were getting because uh, of what you said for me going into round five. Like, hey, it's almost over. You could argue that I won the first and third round. I did win the third and the judges. You could argue I won the first and the third. And whatever Tim told me, I saw I went out there and won the fifth. Could have been that bad of advice. I went out there and won the fifth. You yeah, know what I mean? I mean? Like you had him running away hurt bad in, in the fifth. Uh, I just should have just worded it different. I mean, it's hard in those moments, and you forget you're mic'd up. I'm, I've known him for 10 fucking plus years. I can see his body language. I can see kind of what's going through his mind a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, people's like, you you should have went out there and just yelled at him and said, Rocky, you can do it, Rocky. And just sprint at him and, and throw down. And, and there's a lot of hate from me talking to Marab. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know if these guys are. I'm like, in my mind, this is a, a war. He's trying to smash my bud's face. Mm-hmm. He's trying to take a lot of money from the bud. It's like, 
at what point? And then and then he said Aljo was talking. I mean, to me the, the whole their, time their too. corner was talking to me the whole time too. So it's like I don't know if you can't you can't come. Marab can't say, oh, it's unprofessional. You do, and then his team do it. Just be just say hey, it's part of the game. You guys can yell at me all you want. I still got to <clears> like. And then the fact that he walked away like that, and you and then the ref gets in the way. I'm like, cause you're right, dude. What the hell? Well, like, I just some people, if I get fucking if I get tired in one of my fights, I'm gonna start yelling at the corner. Point. Hey, hey, what? what? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just a free timeout. You get one free <laughs> Yo, timeout bro. per fight. Just start freaking out. On the corner yeah, one schmitty freak out yeah, one schmitty freak out and herb will stop it hey wait let's give him five seconds i'm backing him up too much it's it's only like marab and i think aljo about caught talking about too but even their coaches like hey that's part of the game like that they've been coaching a long time that's part of the game the corner's talking a little bit if that if that could help one percent get his focus off sean who's a sniper then i'm gonna do it i bet people love us talking about this speaking of aljo god wouldn't that suck to be him he had to pull out his fight. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sucks. That's one way not to lose, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you're guaranteed not to lose if you just pull out. <laughs> pull out. And you don't got to lose. You know what I'm saying, though? You know what I mean? No, I'm kidding. That would suck. Injuries suck. <laughs> Speaking well, of injuries. How many times, you, like you said, how many times are you guys fighting with injuries? I mean, you know, every that time. That you don't talk about. Every so time. Know. I have surgery October 3rd. I'm excited about the whole. I just kind of mentally accepted it, unlike the defeat. Uh, I just mentally accepted. All right, we're gonna fucking go through surgery, go through recovery, and uh, just get her done. So I'm ex- I'm actually really fucking excited because it's been bothering me and my fucking just. It, you, you, when you have an injury, you start, um, you know, walking di- for your hip or your knee or your ankle. You start walking a little bit different. What's the word I'm looking for? Counter or. Uh, uh, um, I know you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Where you start doing stuff different just to kind of avoid that spot. And then your back starts to tweak. And then this starts to go out. And so it's just like a lot of little things adding up. So I'm going to take two, three months full just physical therapy, recovery like a fucking pro, eat good, sleep good. It's going to be better too because sometimes yeah. I have an idea what I want to do. And then you come in and this is my fucking hip or I know. this thing that I'm like. All right, well, we'll work around it then. I know. Same with Brandon. Brandon wants to do these lifts, and I'm like, dude, I just I don't feel like I can do that right now. I'm like, yeah. So I, I'm excited. 29. By the time I fight again, I'll be 30. I think 30 to 35 would be my prime. So we got a lot of years left, and uh, knock big on, fights. Knock on the surgery out. It's going to be nice. Yeah. No matter what I fight, who I fight, it's going to be a bigger fight than. It's just going to be a big fight. There's so many options right now. I was just telling Tim, like, it's fun to think about. I can fight him. I can fight him. But it's like in a year nine months whatever it is when i actually come around to fight again who's going to be relevant who's going to be in the right spot who's going to be champ what so it's like pointless to think who's next right now i almost don't even want to think about that or think about fighting just literally focus on on the family focus on healing and just get back get back and better than ever and uh i mean we were in negotiations with that that property and now we got to a spot to where we're going to get the appraisal I mean, the appraisal on the house, and we're on to the next step. Hey, so it's going to be fun neighbors. the next year. Literally going to have a whole goddamn compound. Oh. You're going to have 5.5 acres. I'm going to yep. have 2.1 acres. Build the farm, rise, horses. She's trying to have what? babies with the horses. <laughs> the horses have babies. Really? Uh, so <laughs> that'll, that'll be cool to have a little baby horse. Dude, what about those monkeys? Oh, yeah. Kambuchin monkeys in oh. Great Falls. Dude, oh, those dude. things are living in not a very big environment. Imagine we had... Four times the size of that, and oh. we just had a little kombucha or two monkeys, oh. and they They're ate really so good cool. all day. Yeah, they were. I've wanted a monkey forever. The lady was saying that I mean, it's pretty much like you're gonna have a two year old for the rest of your for life for 40 years. Uh-huh. But if you go I'm in like, there well, all the time, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, you're smart. What's he gonna do? Uh, what's your yeah. what? Man, I remember. I wish dude, I was telling Tim. I wish so bad. We just had a compilation video of Schmitty talking about his stoicism, and it all oh, like yeah. a ten minute video of your stoicism and emotional intelligence, and played it for you, uh-huh. and then played the freak out. Would it be a hoot and a holler? It'd be a hoot and a holler. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember your emotional intelligence on a, out of a ten was an eight. Oh wow, has that gone up? I think. I definitely think it's went up. I think it went up. I think it's <laughs> closer to a nine and a half. I think so. But stoicism Ooh. levels, one out of ten. What do you think you're at? Ten being just absolutely fucking. Someone could run Nothing your car off the road and be like, "That doesn't face me." You can't. Probably a seven. You can't even put my stoicism levels on that bar. They it's, exceed so fucking much. You're like eleven. Holy. <laughs> be well, honest. No, I think stoicism. I think they don't show their emotions to. Yeah, the stoicism. You're not. You're a, a, like something bad happens. You're. Just, 
Okay, well, that's fine. What's not? Because I can well, figure this out. So if I know, three. Sometimes he does that. With the amount of hate Schmini's getting in these paragraphs, a lesser man would end it. Would end it all. <laughs> oh, God. So, Has it went through your mind. Here I am, baby. And here I am for you guys to still roast me because guess what? At the end of the day, I am sorry that I blew up. And I said it on my little four-minute thing. I'm sorry that I overthought uh, stupid things that weren't true. <laughs> And for the miscommunication. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, and no, you we know that working. Yeah, we love it. Dude, every time tuned. in requests or even comments, you see the first couple words, if they're negative, boop, on to the next. Yep. Douche, 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 and douche. And there was a lot of people sticking up for me. So all the people who were, you know, have my back Bot. and know That's who what I'm I saying. Am. Don't Appreciate take. <laughs> I, that's why I think you shouldn't. <laughs> Schmidt shouldn't take those in, even the positive right. ones. Oh, yeah. Just fucking. Yeah. I know who I am. Um, Main character syndrome. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Blue Chew is an online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, but at a fraction of the cost and in a chewable form. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped directly to your door. The best part, it's all done online. That means to visit... The doctor's office, you don't need to. No awkward conversations and no waiting at line in the pharmacy. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises and when you need to perform. Sometimes you need to perform. And if you're having extra trouble performing, extra uh, extra trouble making the lady have a good time, Blue Chew wants you to have the confidence to perform at your best. So discover your options at bluechew.com. And we've got a special for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Timbo Sugar at checkout. Just paying $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code Timbo Sugar to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Yes. But dude, those fucking monkeys though. I mean, they said you don't get don't get multiple because then they'll get attached to that person. That you want them to get attached to you. So you go in there every day, hang out with them. Then they'll get attached to you and think you're their family. God, I know. But if you had two and they were attached to each other, then you were there's like their side. But then one gets in heat and then it fucks up. These monkeys aren't dangerous, are they? The campuchins aren't. No, no, no. They're not chimps. They're not gonna rip your fingers off. They're 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 this big. They're They're fucking this big. But they probably fuck you up a little bit, right? If they got pissed. Yeah. A little Ross monkey. But the lady was explaining to us to him, like, they're not, I mean, fuck. Mm -hmm. The only way that would be possible for us is if Mariah got on board with it. But, dude, you could have a sick little enclosure for that thing. I wanted a monkey since I was, like, four. Dude, that shit's scary. There's, I saw this video of this monkey in India, and it went and ripped yeah, the guy's scalp off. Those things are off. mean. Those things are mean. That's scary as hell. There's different, yeah, different breeds. Would these be outside or enclosed? Inside? Enclosed, but like sweet enclosed, like yeah. it's their own jungle. Okay. They seem cute though. I bet Dude, if they're see so them, cool. I wonder, name one I wonder, Brandon. I wonder though if it would be sad <laughs> sleeping by itself. That's what I'm saying. If you got two, and then we're still buddies with it, it's like they, I think two would be good. Two girls, yeah. Um, uh, again, we're bouncing around, but I'm, I'm excited when it's to get that surgery done. Garner's going to have a whole protocol. It's going to be like a fight camp diet, but it's just a surgery recovery diet. Just eat fucking perfect. Have physical therapy at my house. Like just do this fucking right. And get back to work. Yep. It's like when you broke your foot, man, you dude, I had that. I had my foot surgery and hip surgery in the same year. Yeah. And that foot surgery took two years, two full years to recover from. Yeah. I'm excited for you to heal up and get that better and watch you come yeah. back. Mm-hmm. You're going to be, be coming excited. back bigger than Tim. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> like a Conor McGregor play. Funny. Rewatching that fight with you guys, <laughs> that it was, was so different it was different. from being was there. Seeing all those strikes that you landed the first. A lot of these people that are that oh, I say, go rewatch the fight. They don't have enough money to actually buy the pay-per-view and rewatch it because mm-hmm. they watched it illegally, so they can't rewatch the fight. So they have to wait. So they're not going to rewatch it. They're just going to talk shit. But if you go rewatch it, but again, it's like, fuck, none of these guys really buy the pay-per-view. What, what's nice is at the end of the day, it's a winnable fight. You didn't get your ass beat or anything. Yeah. And just the adjustments that you guys saw and were talking about, dude. Stuff nine of his takedowns, people act like I didn't. I just got wrestle right. fucked. Like he had a good, he had some really, really good entries. He took me down deep a couple shots, mm-hmm. but I stuffed more takedowns than Henry did. Yeah. Ooh, he doesn't like that. But he's a bronze medalist, which is impressive. 
Yeah. Winning bronze is not a fuck. It's a big deal. Do you think there's a level of jujitsu you could get to, to where like they just wouldn't be even better. fuck with it yeah, then? You know, like how uh, I haven't been able to Charles grapple Oliver, for almost. fucking two years. Pretty much. Oh, and look what happened to Charles. <laughs> I knew, I know, but look at, but I mean, there's always gonna be some Rob's not someone a submission better. guy. Like, he's not gonna yeah. take you down and choke you. But I like it when you see like Paul Craig's, you know, and it's like yeah. oh, people don't want to get on top of them. No, my jujitsu could be way mm. better. My jujitsu could be way better. There's a lot of watching that fight back. There's a lot of things I could have done for sure. Bro, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, when's the last time you've done a wrestling or jujitsu class from the start to end? Yeah, no, I've been able to probably like, two years, legit. Yeah, so that's gonna be nice because the I mean the potential for how good he could get if he's in here trying to compete and get better, it's like. Pfft. And Stupid. getting better, but also feeling better too. Yeah, well, it's, I gotta feel better before I can get yeah. better. So let's talk about the fight. <sighs> Max Holloway next. I'm, Max I'm excited Hall for the. Two well, ac the next fight's actually sick. BD BDS Benoit Saint BSD versus uh, Hanato Mayakano. That's a sick mm -hmm. fight. If Hanato wins, Patty Patty called him out. Patty versus Hanato. Hanato's sick, bro. We watched Jalen Turner versus Hanato mm -hmm. this weekend. Jalen boom dropped him with the left hand, walked off, and then ended up getting. Take it down and beat. Oh, yeah. But then Hanato Makano, his jujitsu is really fucking good. That's why with him and Patty Pimba, it'd probably be more of a stand-up fight, I would think. But their, their jujitsu might cancel with, each other out. Then you kind of go with Makano striking, right? Or do nah. you think, I mean, hard hitter, scary. But but uh -huh. how much did Patty look improved, I feel like? True. He looked improved, dude. Yeah. He looked faster. He looked stronger. He looked like he took it more more serious, probably farther out instead of being like, all right, fight camp starts today, seven weeks. All right, I got to cut 35 pounds. That's the focus. I got to cut my 35 pounds. He looked way more dialed the last fight. Yeah. Did you, uh, but uh, he was saying he wants a route like you, so he'd want Hanato Makano. Then who else did he want to call out after that? I forget. It was like in the top two or three or something. But imagine him versus Patty, I mean, uh, Justin Gaethje. <laughs> Uncle Chael on Whoa. YouTube. You see, there's controversy. Go watch. Go see rounds number one, three, and five. Watch that without the commentating. Come back to me and tell me you don't see controversy. Well, what's upsetting with the first round is even though he gets the takedowns, he does nothing with them. Well, if you, you're you supposed to, the number one criteria as a judge is to judge for damage. The motherfucker got a bloody nose yeah. and got his head snapped back in round one. Bloody nose, head snapped back. Is that not damage compared yeah. to getting taken down and fucking kneading the thigh a few times? And honestly, the first three and a half minutes was he didn't do nothing. I I hit him probably fifteen times. Yeah. Body punches, snapped his head back. It's tough. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna bring it up every other couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we were if we were sitting here and you're Marab and we're his team, I mean you could see how you'd be battling it for him. I'd be like, those positions, uh, yeah, those front headlocks, uh, yeah. the submission attempt. I mean, so the it's knees like, look like they, I, cause you know, I don't know too uh, much about how the real damage is on the, but do those knees like hurt that in the throws? moment? They're not a lot like, of them. it's not like I'd rather do that than get my head snapped back from a punch or get punched in the body. Mm -hmm. Um, this, this is some good questions here that Garrett brought us. Um, qu questions to help up and coming fighters. Cause there's a lot of them that listen out there. How do you guys help them in the back before walking out besides besides warming up? I mean, just giving them some positive stuff about them, pointing out some attributes that they have that are better than other people's and just want, I mean, getting them confident. But every fighter is so different. So you have to be with a fighter of multiple fights just to see what kind of mindset he is. Yeah. See, some fighters want a really hard warm up to where they spike their heart rate and get a good sweat. Some fighters don't want to expend a bunch of energy. Um, so being with fighters more and more and more and figuring out kind of what and the like. little things that you do for your fighters. Like, I think I bet if you ask most of them, uh, a good moment is when you wrap their hands, like that moment when you're taking the time to wrap them, they're calm knowing you're doing it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. what, I what would you say, Sean? I think, uh, <laughs> it comes down to the, the previous six weeks. what they do for those six weeks? Like if they had a good training camp, they're in here with good guys, sparring with good guys, had good, you know, good pushes. You could remind them like, hey, we, the work's put in. You're you're ready to go. Just remind them, trust your trust the work that's already been put in. It's tricky if you're you're cornering some guy randomly first time, don't know him. It's like, like hell, like it's yeah. not a lot to say, but just you know, it comes down to the the fight camp. How was the training camp? And those, I mean, those butterflies you get, it's a scary feeling if you've never got those butterflies and there's a whole crowd out there screaming and you're about to go fight this guy. Like, there's a lot of butterflies, but you got to learn how to turn those into, like, an enjoyment. Be like, oof, I like that fucking feeling. And enjoy it because you're not going to feel it 
your whole life. There's a from 30 to 40, 20 to 30 to 40. And you might not feel those butterflies again. So trying to enjoy them. Um, yeah. And then another one too, is just like trying to be, be able to follow your breath and be able to bring yourself back where you're at, even in the locker room, even before the walkout, because it's easy to be like always thinking about the result of the fight. Fuck again. Not no, just being like, there. You got to fucking, that's got to be previous. You can't just, no. Never do that, and then you're like, all right, I'm going to follow my breath. You got to work on that shit for, you know, build up, build that shit up. I mean, the meditation, I would say, if, if you were going to do it, the Sam Harris app, it'll teach you how to do it. It's And it's if you can't afford it, then it's free. Send him an email. He'll send you a login uh, link for free. And he has a program that he puts you through, like a six-week program. Then he has tons of other lessons than longer meditations and stuff, too. Uh, but that's the truth. I mean, you got to learn how to do that. You can't just hear one time and be like, okay, I can bring myself back bring myself back to my breath and feel gravity pulling me down and follow my breath in my nose. You can't just do that. You got to work on it. Like he said, what's been the most rewarding part to you guys about taking these guys to your home state on promotions. Uh, you fight I, dude. just watching those guys after just seeing how fu like Jojo pick holding that belt. Like, Oh my God, this is, <laughs> he's like, this is real. I can't believe this is real. Watching him go through the demons of fight. Like after weigh-ins, like just sit, overthinking, watching him overcome that. Ezra watching him just like kind of know like this is his journey. I feel like he kind of knew he was going to go out there and smoke that kid, but just go out there, still compete, still just do it. Just watching him after, just how excited they are is fucking cool. That's probably my favorite part. Yeah, because before before Wayne's, before the fight, it's like kind of quiet, not really joking yeah. around like we are in here, like what's going to happen. And then after the fight, just, yeah, it just all comes out like ultimate relief. Yeah, that's fire. So that's a good part. I like seeing that part too. And just watching them after those wins, they just get more oh, confident. They get yeah. more confident. They get more motivated. I like seeing it. Yep. What's been the biggest lesson you guys have learned in your career that translates to helping these guys in these fights? Um, For me, I mean, so fucking many, dude. When it comes to rehydrating, when it comes to yeah. uh, trying to sleep before, when it comes to, I mean, just main, a lot of that though. Yeah. Recovering after the weight cut. Um, yeah, that's, pr I mean, dude, them having us to kind of tell them what to eat and how to eat and make sure you chew your food and don't, Hey, don't, let's not eat that right now. Let's eat that later. Dude. Cause um, us after um, amateur fights, holy <laughs> fuck pro bro. fights for me even. Like I mean, I, was, I wasn't, I was, Honey yeah, buns? dude, just like, <laughs> hey, let's just eat some chicken rice. Make sure you chew it really, really good. Stay hydrated. Get some Pedialyte, get some coconut Cause you'd water. go be up before go to golden, golden corral, corral and just unlimited buffet. The more you brownies. eat, the bigger you get. The more carbs, the better. But uh, what's the biggest <laughs> lesson? Uh, one of the biggest lessons uh, for these guys is, too, is you go in, you have f hard sparring rounds, and you lose. You lose those rounds to just not take it super personal. Like, I suck. My training partners are beating me. It's like, that's part of the process. You're not going to come in here and win every fucking round. Yeah. Like, I've lost more rounds in sparring than I've won. I mean, literally, when you're sparring fresh guys, that's not the goal is to win every single round. The goal is to get completely fatigued and gas and still do the right things. And that's the hard thing about sparring. It's like, okay, if I submit this guy, it's not like, okay, sparring's done for the day. We get to leave. Mm. Like, nope. If I submit this guy, he's back on me. Then the next round, another yep. guy's back. So you're trying to make it through those rounds compared to trying to break one person. Uh, but, I mean, that's I've learned a lot from Sean and Benson and these guys, how they reacted to sparring. They wouldn't beat – because I'd beat myself up for the whole weekend. Oh, dude, I'd like, I, I would fuck, cry. Fuck, I'd be so mad. I would fucking cry, dude. I would ruin my weekend, ruin my – we'd spar Saturday, ruin my whole Saturday, ruin my Sunday, just thinking I suck, this, I shouldn't be here. That, that was a huge fucking thing I learned. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. you overcame that? I don't remember. I, I don't know when I feel like I overcame that. It's hard to say. I feel like I've been doing this shit for so long. Everything kind of blurs. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're good about no matter what the fuck happens in training camp. What what really matters is what happens in that moment on that night, yeah. in that 25 minutes. Yeah, 100%. What um, else? What other questions? What was it right there? <laughs> What's the most common mistakes you see from fighters at local level and how do you help them overcome? Uh, I mean, depends where you're at. The the level in Phoenix when you're getting... Well, there is shows out there, though, that just any scrubs can show up for. But I just... You see fighters show up and they, they shouldn't be there. It's uh, like you're about to fight a trained killer and you're fucking hitting a punching bag in your garage. 
Mike. Hey, you gotta start somewhere. I know you gotta go into a gym. Yeah, you definitely gotta go into a gym and train. How does your relationship with Tim influence the way you approach coaching? Do you take cues from his coaching style or bring your own flair to it? I definitely don't. I just, I just fucking. I feel like what I can contribute is more of the mental side of things, like talking them through those emotions, maybe hitting some bre- some some deep breaths, or giving them some ideas how to counter the negative thoughts. You know, like I was telling JoJo, I was like, dude, put yourself, like this is what sometimes I like to do is pretend I already won. Pretend it went perfect. Everything went perfect. And we're chilling. At, like we're still in before the fight. The fight doesn't happen, but pretend it already did and you won. And you're still, not now carry out throughout the day like you already won. Enjoy it. Be like, God, it's not so scary. It's like, I won. I already won. I got to go out there and do it still, but I won. So that's a little trick I like to use that that works really well for me. So just kind of that's more of my coaching style is maybe less. I I definitely give technique st- stuff too, but at that close to a fight, it's more just mental shit. Yeah, I mean for me, I've had so many fucking good coaches and different people who've cornered me throughout my life. So everything they've said to me or done to me that impacted me and made me feel a little bit better, I have that in my brain, and I can give it back to those guys and try to just make them feel a little, a little bit better and. Do the best they can. Diego Lopez with a great fighting against Brian Ortega. I think that puts my name on the table to consider for the title shot. Diego Lopez has made a name for himself. Mm-hmm. He's came on the scene. He kind of did. He's doing his thing, and uh, he definitely. I mean, I don't know who else would fight Max or Eli after. Like uh, Diego Lopez has got to be there. He's got to be the next guy, in my opinion. Uh, Dana White said it's going to be determined when Conor McGregor comes back. Who the opponent is when whenever Conor is ready and he comes back. He no, hit. the Diego Lopez thing. Real quick. Oh, sorry, I didn't know he had. A, I didn't know he had that. I didn't even notice he itches his neck after every punch. I didn't notice until Blake was like, "Dude, that's actually fucking crazy." Well, I guess it's a it's a scar from a kid, and when it sweats, it itches like really bad. So he's got to like kind of itch it a little bit. But oh. Diego is a fucking big dude. He's not, he he looks like a jacked 145er and you can tell he's strong when he grapples and he sits down. You can tell he's a good boxer too. He sits down on punches to knock people out. Super fucking skilled. Uh, So, I mean, I'd like to see him versus anyone. Nice guy too. Yeah. No habla inglés. Solo español. Mm -hmm. Pero. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Thank you to our sponsors, Aries Tech. Now, these are man-made electromagnetic field ra- radiation from phones, Wi-Fi routers, etc. And it has been shown to impact testosterone, fertility, cause oxidative stress, inflammation, disrupt circadian rhythm, and even affect the blood barrier. I got one on my phone. I got one in my game room, and I have one next to my bed. So these just these these waves aren't frying my brain. Aries Tech now is an official UFC partner. Has peer-reviewed, patented technology designed to neutralize harmful emfs and protect athletes from the effects the aries tech life tune products use patented technology that transformed harmful waveforms from wireless devices into biologically compatible frequencies help to minimize the negative impact on your body without compromising device performance life tune devices come in various forms they have necklace you can put one in your room like i said they have bigger ones smaller ones you can put one on your phone athletes report reported improved cognitive and neurological function use aries tech products including notable half second improvement in, in reaction time during testing at leading sports performance centers use code capital t s s for 25 percent off any aries tech products and uh listeners can also enter a to win two exclusive tickets to UFC pay-per-view 309 at Madison Square Garden on November 16th, two $250 UFC gift cards, and $3,000 worth of Aries Tech products and VIP tour of the Octagon before the event. Check it out in the link in the bio. Thank you very much, Aries Tech. Um, but yeah, that's that. That'll be a sick one. Max and Eli, dude. I, we'll talk about that when it gets closer. But I am fucking excited for that, dude. I feel like the first round is gonna say how that whole fight's. Gonna I don't go. think so. I, I do. I think they're both such dogs that no matter what happens, the first round they're gonna they could switch it. Like one punch can change the fight, dude. But Max comes out there and finds his range right away. You've seen how fights go like that. I know they're not probably Ilya's level, obviously, but he has the potential to make people look terrible. Yeah. But do Ilya and Matt, this is as high a level as it gets. It's going to be a sweet kickboxing fight, too. I don't think he, Ilya can grapple. Motherfucker can wrestle. I don't think he's going to be. I don't think. I think it's going to be a sick kickboxing fight. Yeah, I'm curious if, if Ilya is going to be able to track him down enough, cut him off enough to where he's going to be able to put Max on the fence and sit in the pocket and let go of his nasty combos. <sighs> it's going to be sick. Or is Max going to be beautiful with his footwork and keep him at the end of his punches for the whole time? 25 minutes. 
fuck, it's gonna be so sick. I'm yeah, pumped. He does That's have a big the ability fight, to make dude. people look, dude. Like Calvin Cater, I still can't Remember? get over that fight, bro. Peace the fuck out of him. And Calvin Cater is an orthodox boxer. Mm. I mean, skilled as fuck. Not maybe not quite the skills of Ilya, but I don't know. You've seen Calvin Cater look so fucking good. Yeah, yeah. And then and for him to get like, oh, yeah. that that's probably one, the most exciting fight for me right now is Ilya versus Max. Oh, I'm fucking yeah. so excited for it. Uh, but but Hamza versus uh, Whitaker. I'm excited for that. That's Ooh, exciting, but that's, I mean that's the same card, which is sick oh, as fuck. Yeah, um, it's gonna be fun. Alex that? Pereira, dude, I see. Listen to this. In since 2022 to 2024. Eight UFC wins, two Oof. belts won, five champs beaten, two title defenses, six finishes. Oh, beast. Fucking cr- in two years. It's fucking crazy. He, round trees next. Yeah, I'm excited for that. That's fucking sick. Stipe, or uh, Aspinall's officially the backup fighter for Stipe versus Jones. God, I wonder if Jones and Stipe, if one of them gets hurt, if they're like, <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, you never know. So he's officially the backup fighter. Damn. Right? I think, I mean, that's what I saw. So, yeah. That promo got me fired up for Stipe. I'm like, Did oh, it? I hope he's still in there just as ready to go, man. Let's go. God, I dude. I hard. just wouldn't. I feel like Stipe is going to make it more of a fight than people think. I mean, maybe I'm just thinking back old prime Stipe. Who's, maybe he's aged. But who knows? It's hard to say. Yeah. Good Stipe is a motherfucker, long- dude. Stipe right. is a beast. Heavyweights tend to have the longer careers, right? Mm-hmm. Let's go. And everyone says he's put on a lot of size, too. Like, he look, looks at least 20 pounds heavier than he usually is. So, that'll be cool. What else we got, Schmidt? How's it feel, man? I've always wondered. <laughs> People asking for picks? Or how, no? how was the, the Jeff Wittick Steiny pod? It was funny. They were they were funny, but Jeff Wittick, he's real serious about that fight card. I know. Hopefully, my bleachers are set up at the SSFC. I'm hoping it, they are. Well, I mean, I know he's excited, and I fucking love Jeff. Uh-huh. When it comes down to it, though, and we're we'll a, we're up. two we're two weeks out, then we're a week out. Uh huh. Then his knee hurts. Then it changes no, a little just, bit. I believe in Jeff. I, I believe I believe up. him too, but he's gonna probably have to fight Sir Gimme because George Jenko, I don't think, want to fight him. Mm-hmm. Sir Gimme from Twit or Kick, right? Yep, Gimme's wanting to fight. And that's a, and that's a good even matchup. It really is. Um, what George say? I just don't think George is really interested in that. He he might be, but I guess we'll have to ask him. That'd be sick, George Janko on there. I, I asked Steiny if he wanted to fight somebody, and they had like some producer guy. Eldo. Yeah. Steiny fucking made a huge huge fuss about having to grapple a kid for two minutes. Yeah. Steiny's <laughs> not Steiny's not built like that. I love Steiny, but he ain't built he ain't built like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So life sucks. It does. Oh, I wish this weather was better. <laughs> um, well, no, I love it. I'm, I'm kidding. What's on the agenda for the week? I'm uh. Dude, it's so weird. I, I say this every time. People are pretty annoyed. But it's so weird coming out of fight camp for like, what's the agenda now? Especially knowing I'm getting surgery because I've I've been still like lifting and working out a little bit, but it's like I feel like I'm like God, it's fucking pointless. But I just work out every day just for mental. Should come like, in. I mean, whew. at least on Tuesdays and Thursdays when we have no get five thirty, you should just put that on your schedule. Come yeah. in. You can even help coach. Help just be on the mats. Uh, that'll be good. Me teaching, playing some COD. Oh, uh, I can't tr- wait to play COD. Trying to get this house shit figured out now because I don't know if I'm gonna sell my house. I don't know if I'm gonna rent out my house. Uh, trying to figure out when you have to pay capital gains or when you don't oh, yeah, because I don't know if you. If I don't sell my house right away, but I sell it in two months and I take the profits from that house and put it right into my new house, do I have to pay capital gains? I don't know. Brandon, can you help me with that? Man, I'm not a professional in the housing market field or like mortgages and stuff and like selling houses. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, we got a ton of shit about the hundred, like the the other stuff when we said if Kamala Kamala gets oh in, yeah, but is like, I guess oh, it's over hundred over. million. Some I don't know if it's a hundred million. Yeah, I think it was. If you have over a hundred million in assets or something, then it's different. But it's like people are freaking. Yeah, I know. But dude, I mean, real politics. Quick, what do we got? I'm about? excited. I'm excited. Uh, Dana White said they've never committed to boxing, and when they commit to something, they go all in. And I'm all in on boxing, dude. That's exciting. Yeah. Mirrors Mirab boxing. <laughs> 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 Jokes, but dude. That's fucking exciting. I've been, I feel like I got five, six more good years in me. Uh-huh. If UFC is going to do something with boxing, I would love to fucking. I mean, that could be that fucking could be so sick. Fun. Who knows? 
yeah. I love MMA though. I do love the. I, I sounds stupid. I love I love the wrestling aspect of MMA. I really do. It makes the. I think it just makes fighting so much sweeter. Boxers are fucking pussies, dude. Mm. Devin Haney's a bitch. He, he is such a bitch, dude. If Devin Haney wants to talk shit, he really wants to fight. I'll put a million dollars on me versus him, no time limit, and we can fight. MMA rules, just a fight. Or we can do no rules. So if you want to fucking eye poke me, you can do a real fucking fight. If you want to talk shit on Twitter, we can really, really actually fight. Ooh, I like it. Or just don't talk shit. One of the two. Either don't talk shit or let's actually fight. I mean, you... It, but if it, but if you can talk shit, knowing it's not going to happen because you know the nego- your negotiations would be so high for something like that, can you talk shit? Or? Dude, that's I, just like the pussies that comment on my boy and be all <laughs> negative and they hide behind some fake picture and a fake name. I'm on X2 going wild. My name's Brendan Miranda and I fucking I'm stand on business. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like that shit talk uh, to Devin Haney too. It's like he's on the space. It's like you can catch hands. Yeah, I mean, if he really wants to fight. I'm I mean, down to fight. Yeah, fuck I mean, yeah, dude. I'd, yeah. yeah, I'd be scared for him. Hundred. Yeah, and it's uh, sick with the position you're in, champ. Just because you bring a lot of entertainment, no matter where you go. Yeah, I would even. I would box. I wouldn't put a million dollars amount of money, but but I would box him. Hey, just boxing rules, just to protect him. I would just simply box him. But he wouldn't simply just fight me. So I mean, don't talk shit. Yeah, it's a different different sport. Some lady yeah. asked me if I was Conor McGregor in Great Falls. We were walking around. <laughs> yes. Some old lady came up to at me at the farmers a, market. At the farmers market, came up to me ourselves. So excited. Are you that? Are you that fighter, Conor McGregor? I said, <laughs> Yes, sure I am. <laughs> oh my god, I love what you do. And she, Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, that's far. And Tim Fucker. And then, uh, oh. and then this uh, probably little three or four year old boy was like so excited. To get he was a probably five or six. Pulled his hat off so his hair showed. It was so funny. Him and his brother ran up to me and wanted a picture. And they were just like shaking. So I kind of like got squatted down to be on their level. And he's like, I had my hood on. And he pulled my hood off. He said, you need to show your hair. And it was so <laughs> fucking cute. That's cool. Yeah. It's crazy how much young, young, young bucks are just fans of the Sugar Show. It's crazy. Uh, we went to some good coffee shops out there. Electric City Coffee, uh, Al Blanco. This kid makes some phenomenal coffee yep. in Great Falls. And we're talking about maybe one day on the west side yep. there when we get our properties going, opening a west side coffee shop. A yeah, really, fire. really sweet one. And uh, get it going because it needs a good coffee Electric shop Electric City too, remember? You can just tell. You go into a coffee shop. I think there's specialty coffee, though. That's what it's called compared to just like Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks. Oh. Fucking uh, shit coffee. Like specialty we say coffee. What happened on your Snapchat or no? Yeah, I mean, dude, we walk into this fucking joint. Tim Snapchatting it. So before we get there, we're walking in. Tim's like, "All right, we're going to this coffee joint. Should be good. Looks brand new. Blah blah blah." And then like the next snap's like, "All right, we walked in. Looks like it's not very quality. Looks like that shitty ingredients." So we left. The lady that owned the coffee spot just seen the first snap and replied, "Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. That's my coffee shop." Then the next snap said. Oh my god, that's so embarrassing. This sucks. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I mean, specialty coffee. If you're looking to make a buck and you want to buy some cheap syrups, and not, and not saying that was that. I just the, what I looked at. It if if it's cheap syrups and you see the cheapest great value milk, and then you see probably the cheapest beans on the market that are probably heavily sprayed with pesticides, but they probably were roasted six months ago. I mean, yeah. can you give an honest review? Well, I'm oh, yeah. looking for specialty coffee here. <laughs> like yeah. nice fucking fresh beans. Maybe a lot of places do their homemade syrups, uh, good organic milk. That makes a difference in the fucking coffee. And you can tell. I love how much of a prince you are with your coffee. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Is it is it kind of get <laughs> You're princey about it, but uh, I love it. Yeah. Dude, I it's mean it's best. it's a good it's you quality taste you it. can taste. It's you a taste dude, it. it's a such a popular drug. Oh yeah. It's my second I mean Probably my first, my first favorite drug. Oh, yeah. So why not it be quality as fuck? Because then it's probably going to give you all the quality benefits. Mm-hmm. What's crazy right now in the coffee shop is with the machines of coffee machines, it's too cold in there, and it was messing with it. That's good to know. I know. but that's It is how, a chilly as fuck. It's 61 degrees. I don't know why. It's 61? People? Yeah. I don't think people, the general Jesus. public knows the science behind coffee. Most people no. don't. Yeah, dude, no, it's no. insane. You, it's a whole world, though. There's a, it is. A lot of people. And are. I wonder if most coffee shop owners really know, like that person that you told. But you can tell when a coffee shop owner opens a shop that they're passionate about a good cup of coffee or yeah. if they're like, I'm looking to make a buck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People's, you would have been happy yesterday. Yesterday we were super busy while you, you guys were gone. Gym was packed. A lot of people came in that were new. We've been getting a lot of new people. 
and uh, right away they take you. They go, "Oh my god, this is so good!" And they say it doesn't have that uh, burnt taste, the bitterness. Or, yeah, the bitterness. That machine. Yeah, there's people that get just the shots and they'll take it, and those are like, and they'll be able to go, "Oh wow, it has a nice chocolate taste to it." And I'm like, "Yeah, it's a fucking dark chocolate taste." It's crazy. Yeah, but yeah that's pretty. Yeah. Does, does a lot of things on your Instagram pop up like coffees? At, oh yeah, at reels, times how they make them. Yeah. yeah, there's so many little intricate tools. Yes. Yeah, and you could go get crazy, real crazy with it. Dude. You could go crazy with the tools. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Waddell, we could have a, a sick Waddell shop coffee out shop there. out there would be sweet. An actual brick and mortar where you can just go in. We need to literally just find the the location and then <clears throat> just slowly go from there. You know what I think the move is too. With this what, is man? because you see it down the street with the smoke shop, but it's an empty cafe. When we went to that smoke shop in Vegas, mm. they had great. It was good coffee. I don't know what it, it tasted really good. Uh-huh. Uh, you can smoke. They had food. It's like, dude, if you could bring that world together, too, with all your organic food, organic coffee, good uh, grown weed. I mean, I think it's called a consumption lounge, and I was curious to what the laws are with a consumption lounge here. Yeah. Um, be interesting. That would be fucking interesting. It's like the classiest way to smoke, for real. Smoke they bring shit. in like really clean pieces. They, oh, they were yeah. bringing it's bongs and shit. Brand yeah. spanking clean. The one we went to literally had only in San California Francisco? had only stores in Bickle Volcanoes. So yeah. you went a new tip. That was you can, fucked. That was we were high. And it it was crazy because it was like a bunch of older people that mm-hmm. like almost they were sitting around a a bar, but it was just with the herbs. Yep. And just talking. It was the best. I'm like, that's fucking crazy cool. Yeah, and the air conditioning system is really great, too, because it's constantly sucking, so it's cold in there. It doesn't get smoked out. It's sick. They had a chessboard, too, so I was playing yeah. some chess. <laughs> well, to wrap up. all the way back around, Umar said he doesn't want to wait for Marab to fight next year. He said he'll fight whoever next. I wow. thought that was pretty interesting. I mean, dude, when you're that skilled and you believe in your skills, it's like... Why not I, stack Chad when you're I mean, healthy? Especially if he's... Pulls out of most of the fights and he's ready to go now and he's healthy. I mean, because I think Peter versus Figgy is probably going to happen. Umar versus Peter. Umar versus Figgy would be sick. Um, there's a lot of sick, sick fights in that division. Yeah, I mean Peter Yan versus Umar. That's that would be sick. That would be yeah. sick. That would be sicker than Peter or Umar versus Marab. I mean Peter versus style wise, yeah. Yeah. Anytime Peter fights, it's usually pretty fucking yeah. sick. Um, what else, man? The lounge, if you do, uh, you just have to get a certain license and make sure your zoning is okay, yeah. and then you're able to do it. So it is completely legal to do. You just have to approve it with your city, so with Waddell. I w- hey. or, or Peoria or, or wherever, if, if we yeah. did it here. But I wonder what the license fee is because a lot of licenses are mil- weed, millions yeah. of dollars. For alcohol license. Combine it. Do a merch shop, too. I already got one. Mate. How's Greasy Warlike doing down here? You guys see him much? Oh, yeah. He comes and visits at the shop all the time before he leaves. I mean, that's just crazy. We were talking about Warlike being down here, and now he's down here. Uh, Six months, though, to get good at jujitsu, so we'll see how good he gets. Yeah, exactly. But fuck, he's a funny bastard, isn't he? Yeah. I love debating with him. When you debate with him, he has such strong opinions that you cannot get mad. Um, <laughs> Do you ever get in debates with him? We, oh, my God. Back, well, I need a game with you guys because that's when all our debates would happen. Yes. Warren, yeah. War, or Sona finally texted me just now. They just woke up. They, said they streamed all night. They were just calling girls on on the phone, risen on Twitch. <laughs> that's Nuh-uh. fire. That's yeah. badass. I wonder if from whose PC? Sona's probably? Uh, well, I think they can go live on their, on his PlayStation. Oh, yeah. Sona has a PC. But I think they can go live on his PlayStation, too. Mm. I just want to go out they, with those guys to see their Riz. I don't just think like they have Riz, bro. Warlike doesn't. I know no. that for sure. Sona will try to use his pretty boy, and a lot of times it'll work <laughs> with his pretty boy stuff. Those two should do some speed datings all the time and just do that on Twitch. Yeah, there's that a would big be fire. War, there's a big community to that. There is a big. If they committed to it, we could help them try to help them get it going. Yeah, it would be funny. It would be funny. Yeah, <laughs> that coffee man is really really running through me. Oh, that you. License is 100 to 500K. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I bet. That. Just for the I weed bet. stuff, you're saying? Yeah. Just for the that. consumption lounge, yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Dude, <laughs> I, I, I'm excited to go outside. Yeah. It's so Just to go nice. and decide to play COD. <laughs> like, the walk into my house is going to be incredible. <sighs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We need to have a dance night. We need to go. Where was the place you were talking to me about? You want It's to right go? up by my house. Mm-hmm. Four miles from his joint. It's like a. Well, not mine. You learn, Sonos. Yeah, Sonos. You learned to dan- uh, dance. Mine dance. Step dance, line dance. Yeah. Said people are recognizing them out there. Yeah. 
like people. Was it one? It, was it was it two? A, yeah, it was a guy that and then his girlfriend said that he was cute or something. Damn, that's fire, dude! Remember, we were at the Vig. We were eating eating dinner. Me, sorry, Schmidt, you didn't get the invite. You were working. <laughs> 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 Me, Tim, Sona, and War were eating at the Vig. This girl comes over. I don't, it seems a little buzzed up, and uh, she's like, "Hey, can I have a picture?" And clearly I ovulating. Up, I stand up to take a picture, and Tim's like, "Oh, just come like sit, have her sit in the middle." So she sits in the middle, and uh, so uh, War takes a picture. I thought she was with her like girlfriend. She's, she's like, "Oh, I'm going. To, we're going to a concert tonight. You guys should come." Like, I'm, I'm like, "Who are you going with?" She's like, "My friend." And then I didn't see because we were sitting this way. Warren Sona saw this way. She goes back to her boyfriend, and he just gets up and dips. And we like, had we had slapped no, her on the shoulder and dips. And we had no idea she had a boyfriend. We were sitting there facing uh, the away from them. Uh huh. And so she comes and sits in the middle of us and was just being and super she was flirty, horned up. horny yeah. as fuck. Well. Damn, Damn, you're helping my leg. Yep. Then you did him a favor. We did him because that hoe wasn't loyal. Yep. Well, it seems like, like yeah. maybe a Tinder date or something. Or but uh, she, he got bad, up, man. gave her a pat on the shoulder, and dipped, and she was <laughs> scurrying behind him. <laughs> you ruined a Tinder date, bro. That's messed up. Mm-hmm. Well, that whore, it's like don't. <laughs> hey, sorry. She can be flirty. If you're with her, maybe with her, he, she can be maybe, flirty. But it probably made that dude feel like shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It'll be a whore. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't really talk that way, but buddy. I, the shit you said in Great Falls. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that was clearly dark humor. <laughs> Yeah, no, emphasis on the Netflix. Did you guys watch the new Netflix series Monster? It's like the can, the second series of the Jeffrey Dahmer. Did you guys oh, ever watch no. that one? Did that come I watched out it recently. recently. Yeah, it's about the what was the brothers' names? The Mendez brothers. Yeah, the crazy. Menendez brothers. Was it Menendez? good? It's the writing's good, the acting's good, and the story's fucking crazy. Damn, geez. Do you be your biceps are looking fucking huge. You've been lifting or no? Oh, He's damn. been fucking. Yeah, <laughs> is that what it's been? Yeah, you know, I'd be doing it. <laughs> Have you been lifting at all upper body though? No, I should. Push though. ups or anything? I, sh- I have. What the fuck? Your gun's looking so big for? It's oh, stop. I'm dead ass. Oh, stop. Well, he's been <laughs> jits and he's a goddamn blue belt in Brazilian jiu jitsu. That is mm. sick as fuck, Schmidt. I know, man. It's- what about you, Schmidt? So he's working on so it. that dog. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Let's not Just eat. try to get you fired. Up. <laughs> all right. So that you dog. You want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Should I sell shirts? Really want to do this? <laughs> There's a lot of ideas you could have yeah. done. Group slots. <laughs> fucking. I the group slots. Sar- that would. Ladies yeah. that were in the group. Just I have all of our girlfriends. The group right. slot was not what I meant, and it's just it was. The best one was I made the press conference for that that comment. I saw uh, that like. Oh yeah! I oh, made yeah. the press box. when they put oh, your yeah. face on the sphere and you. Just, oh yeah, <laughs> that one. I thought that one. was JX. Yeah, I, saw on Twitter, uh, was I yeah. know in my head I thought he made that and I was uh, like, damn, he got me. I'm a little upset funny. that it wasn't JX. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking funny. We can only laugh, Jobins. That's all I can do. I'm sorry. Laughing shit. Laugh you know I mean? shit. Move but, on, dude. One of them. How long is this? Wait, four, forty-five, fifty, five, fifty. Uh, anything else you got to say, man? Uh, I'm excited to fucking get home. Mariah got her horses from Utah. Hang out with my dogs, cook some nice snacks, and fucking watch We literally got show. off the flight, flew to Salt Lake, got off the flight, flew to Phoenix, went to Tim's, made a coffee, and drove here. Mm-hmm. Dedicated to our Timbo Sugar Show fans. We didn't have a lot to talk about today, but we're giving it to you guys because we know you're working. People are sitting on their treadmill right now listening to this. They're driving their truck listening to this. They're fucking out of jan- their janitor listening to this. There's fuck people all over the world, all over doing all sorts of shit. I look forward yank? to this everywhere. You having a yank to my voice? <laughs> I hope not. But somebody fucking prize watching porn with Timbo Sugar Show playing in the background right now. Ew. God. It Hopefully it's the girl at least. Probably is. Probably vibrating her little bean. Um. JX, how's your puppy been? Been how's it been doing potty trainers dumping all over the joint? Diago? I've been crate training him. Crate training him? Yeah. Nice. That's the way to do it. Schmidt, Is it the way to do it? <laughs> I always <laughs> wonder. Training? I always wonder. I think it's good for him. I think oh, good discipline. Who? I th- oh Michelle? Yeah, she's yeah. I mean Jane's good, yeah. Your sister's probably the person to talk about with the house stuff, right? Well he's got a big Paul. Paul's a realtor. Yeah. Oh Paul. true, true. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Paul, bro. Yeah. Yeah, he's the Fucking one. Fucking John Paul. Wonderful. Doing John it. Paul. My boy Ryan. My boy Ryan. Football's yeah. on today. I'm excited for that. I got a couple prize picks cooked up. Watch, 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 watch a little football. I, mean, I wouldn't mind doing uh, maybe the game in a little later. Dude, you Just text me. I'll get nice the fuck on. Man. Enjoy the nice weather for a bit. No, I'm excited to go see Atlanta. I haven't seen her in two days. Oh, my baby. I got her little Montana hat. Mm-hmm. Bro, she's so funny. We've been going on walks at night and she'll dribble the soccer ball all the way down the road, like just kicking it like a little bit. I'm like. Aww. It's just fucking cute. 
It's too cute, man. Mm-hmm. Basketball, I beat this guy, pig. Pretty horse, easy. you idiot. It's horse. Mm-hmm. Fucking dumb Canadian rules. I would have beat you fucking three times. He plays horse, so H O R S E. And then I thought I thought you have like a redemption, so you could you have the person that so I would have to reshot the, the last shot that got him out, or he a chance, or he shoots it again. Mm. But he plays the Canadian rules mm-hmm, to where mm-hmm. you have H O R S E, so you go to the free throw line, and every time you make a you get two free throws, and every time you make one, it takes a letter off. That's stupid. And he no. drained. It's fucking bad. I mean, it's more of a long game, more cardio well, game, and I usually win but, that. So. so I would have beat him like twice. But he was yeah. he went Sounds six for rules. six <laughs> on uh, <laughs> fucking <Colty. laughs> free throws. <laughs> six for six on free throws, and then he finally got me out of there. Uh, but yeah, that was good. Playing some basketball at the old rec center. Dude, Great your Falls. Achilles held up. Great Falls. It was nice weather, wasn't it? It was beautiful. Green. I, it was refreshing something air. About, I was actually there was some kind of peace walking through that farmers market. I liked it a lot, but the thing is, is like it's only that nice month and a half out of the year. Yeah, it's like it's fucking. I, like, I guess the summers are fine. I like but. the simplicity of a small city, uh, but Great Falls, windy and really fucking cold. Windy and really cold, but it's the nice restaurants there. It's turning into a. I mean, I fucking. I, I like, think we I like move going back. back. I like going back. Let's move back. Open up a gym, mm-hmm. coffee shop. Mm-hmm. Dude, I want to travel in that whole north uh, west area too, like where Blake's from, like Portland. Never like, been. Not Portland, but like Oregon. Yeah. Like I've heard there's really beautiful sites. Dude, all the, up there, you know. This place I used to live with Pat Healy is called Eagle Creek, Oregon, and it was literally like the fucking rainforest. Damn. Like, Way back there. Creeks like, going, uh, berries uh, growing, just green. Um, rained a lot, but it was just fucking cool. Boom. What do you say we call it? I wouldn't mind that. I got a shit. <sighs> okay. Late. Episode 304. I just want to say yeah, thank you guys. Tune Thanks in. for coming like, in, Like, subscribe, and uh, and still, we fucking did it. We got it overturned. Sugar State Athletic Commission officially did it yesterday. So, <laughs> thank you. I just want to say thank you. We're looking forward to defending it again. Peace. Peace out. <laughs>